Welcome back, researchers and scientists. Today, we're talking about those big ideas of habitat and conservation. And again, we're going to be looking at two different texts, Frogs and Toads and The Life Cycle of a Frog, both by Bobby Kalman. So I want to start where any good researcher using a book is going to start my table of contents to see if I can find those big ideas that I am looking for. So I know habitat is where my frogs and toads live. So let's look at frogs and toads first. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? I think I'm going to start with page 10, frog and toad homes, because I know that's where their homes are. And I also want to maybe learn about conservation, where we try to protect animals and their habitat. And if there's no more golden toads, maybe they don't have a habitat anymore. I think I'm going to read that page today, too. Let's see. Over here, I see in water and on land. And I kind of know from my orienting to the text and learning a bit about frogs, they live in water and on land. So I think I'm going to read that part of the life cycle of a frog today. Let's get started. In water and on land. Almost all frogs live on land near ponds, streams, or rivers. They live on land because they breathe air, but water is very important to frogs too. Frogs are born in water and they return to it as adults. They need water to keep their thin skin from drying out. The green frog below is a common frog that lives in the wetlands of North America. Okay, so I've learned frogs need air and water. They need to be able to breathe air so they don't live fully in the water, like some of our water animals do and fish. But they need to be near the water because they have to keep their skin moist. Some frogs, such as this wood frog, get water without living near a pond. Well, that's interesting. These frogs live in holes in the ground or in rotting logs. They find water in puddles or in piles of leaves. So that's interesting. They can get their water without having to live near it because they find other ways to adapt. Frog and toad homes. Frogs and toads live almost everywhere in the world, except where it is very cold. They stay in cool, shady places when they are hot. They sit in the sun when they are cold. Some frogs and toads live in holes in the ground. Some live in ponds and lakes. Oh, we learned that in the last book, too. Some live inside flowers or ratting logs. Learned that in the other book, too. Some even live high up in trees. So I really like this because I learned a few new facts, like some live up high in trees and that they can sit in the sun when they're cold. But I learned some of the same facts too, that they live near ponds and lakes and in rotting logs. No more golden toads. Frogs and toads are important. They eat harmful insects that could destroy crops or carry diseases. Unfortunately, there are fewer frogs and toads than there used to be. Some people think the reason is that houses and factories have been built where frogs and toads used to live. Other people, think that water pollution has killed most of the frogs and toads. The beautiful golden toads on this page may already be extinct. So I'm looking at the word extinct. It's a bold word and it sounds like it's gonna be a really good expert word that I should probably learn. Extinct means, oh, they're gonna tell me right here in the text, they are putting it right in context for me. Extinct means that a plant or animal no longer exists. No one has seen a golden toad in several years. That's a shame. They look really cool. Scientists are sorry that they did not have more time to learn about this fabulous toad. So today, readers, when you go off to continue your research on your animals, make sure that you are seeing if you're learning the same information or different information amongst your books. Off you go, researchers.